Joy, you have led one of the most effective political accountability and action exercises in the history of global development, the famous traffic light scorecards. And if you haven't seen one of them, uh, you have no excuse, they're everywhere. Mm -hmm. As a result of your deep partnership, particularly with African governments, 49 countries now have malaria scorecards and another 30 have scorecards for women's and children's health. But the scorecards typically include just a couple of nutrition indicators, typically breastfeeding and vitamin A. So what can we expect to see from scorecards in the nutrition area in the future? And can you share with us tonight one do and one don't for developing more nutrition sensitive scorecards? Thank you. Those, those are, that's quite a, a group of questions, but I, I you know, as, as I've been listening to this distinguished panel, what has been coming to my mind is that, you know, some of the data that we have, the statistics that we have on, on nutrition, that actually close to half of the population of the world is either undernourished or malnourished. Mm -hmm. That is frightening. That's a systemic problem. So that we're not just talking about the, the, the fact that we who come from Africa and Asia are losing 11% of our GDP you know, to, to, to malnutrition. But we are actually talking about a, a challenge that faces every single government on the planet. Now, if every single government on the planet is facing this challenge, the accountability mechanism that's going to work has to be fully integrated, and it must be as systemic as the challenge and as comprehensive as, and complete as the challenge is in order for it to be resolved. I, I like the statement that, that uh, Mama Marshall made at the beginning when she said, nutrition is about human capital, it is about people. So whatever accountability mechanism you come up with must start with the people. It must be owned and it must be understood by the people. The, 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 the way in which we have been measuring uh, 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 performance, the, 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 the smart indicators that we've been using and the way in that we've been collecting data, we do, we do it you know, without actually engaging people and without people understanding what we are doing and without people being in control of the, of the, of the service that we want to render to them and of the, the, the potential that that nutrition can give them. We are aware that, uh, in fact, uh, there's a 33% likelihood that you are going to, you are, you are going to, um, to, to become poor if you, are, if you are undernourished or malnourished. And we are also, and, and, and Ma Marshall talked, talked about the, the critical significance of the 1,000 days of the first 1,000 days of life and contribution to stunting. To, to what extent do we get the people that we are serving to own this at community level and for them to actually drive their accountability for the delivery of programs? That must be the face of sustainable development accountability. That is the next phase. We must take the accountability out, out of the scorecards, and out of the office mm. to the community, mm -hmm. so that the community drives these mechanisms and these instruments that we use in the office and in the workplace. So for me, that is the new face of accountability. And I feel that there is no better uh, um, area of development to actually demonstrate how this can work than uh, nutrition. So for me, that is the one do. Let the people own accountability. The, the one don't that we, we have to avoid is to, is to feel that um, it is possible uh, to, to exclude the private sector. But, I, but, but my sister, they really covered it very, very well. <coughs> Food is the fastest growing industry in the world. A lot of us in, our, in developing countries were brought up by market women. What are they selling? Food. It is a growing industry and it continues to grow. And it, it has a lot of uh, innovation 
a lot of our young people now are, are participating, are becoming chefs. And it is a very attractive industry for, for young people and profession for young people. So food is a growth industry and it is exciting. But at the same time, it is a huge challenge. Our oceans are threatened by the way in which we eat mm -hmm. and our land is threatened by the way in which we, mm -hmm. we, we, we eat as well. So for me, the one don't is to try and uh, carve a little niche for food that takes it out of the way in which the way we live mm -hmm. and takes it out of uh, development and takes it out of taking people out of poverty. Food is an important vehicle for taking people out of poverty, mm -hmm. not just by making them well nourished, but by make, but you know, the, the developing industry, the developing countries are going to be relying on agriculture mm -hmm. to take us out of uh, uh, developing country status into middle income status. And most of the agriculture products we're talking about is food. So that's where economic growth is for us. So we must not think that we can talk about food and separate it from commerce and from trade. It is not possible. What we can do is ensure that whatever accountability mechanisms that we have, whatever instruments we, ca we come in place, uh, we, we put in place are fair, not just within, the, within the, the country, but within the region and globally. Food is the, the most unfairly traded commodity in the world. And these are the things that we have to fix. So for our future, Let's take accountability out of the office. Let's take it out to the world. Let's take it to the communities. And let us make sure that we use this opportunity actually to protect our planet and to save it rather than to continue to damage it with the way in which we trade and we use food. Thank you. Thank you, Joy. Thank you.